Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you the real power of the levels adjustment layer in Photoshop. Theme tune. Boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -boo. Levels. <laughs> that was me walking up and down the stairs of levels. So, this is part of my Photoshop training course. If you want to get all of these videos and download the source files so you can practice along with me, head over to photosincolor.com where you can get all of that. So, levels. This is all about the adjustment layer. And essentially it's a layer that sits on top of the rest of your image and does some amazing things. And it's different to the tone curve. Okay, it's really important. So let's jump into Photoshop and have a look. So here we are inside Photoshop. We're using this photograph today of Rosie White of Dance Lovely. She teaches dance here on YouTube. But anyway, so the um, levels adjustment layer is up here inside this panel just here. Now, if you don't see this, you just have to go Windows and then you just have adjustments just here and that will bring that up. Now, another way to do this is to go Image adjustments and then you can select levels from inside here. I wouldn't recommend doing this because any changes you make for this, like this for example, it makes it on the actual layer, okay? Instead, if you click on this, it puts an adjustment layer above this and it's going to, it means that you can go in and edit it afterwards. So, what exactly is it? Well, essentially you've got two different sections to this and I'll show you exactly what they mean. So the first thing, this is essentially a histogram. Now the first, it builds this histogram, but you may get this little triangle down here which says it hasn't built it very accurately. Click on that and it's gonna build a more accurate histogram for you. So always start off by doing that. Okay, so what does this do? Well essentially, what you have to imagine here, this is your black point and it's a black little slider. This is your highlight point, white point, um, and this little pointer because it's white and then you've got your midtones in the middle. So essentially by moving this one here it will make your image darker but let me explain why it makes your image darker. Is when you move it up here anything to the left of this one you've said is completely black. So essentially you're moving up your black point adding contrast to the image essentially. Now on the other side when you slide this, anything to the right of this one, so in this section here, what you're saying is, is now pure white. So by bringing these two in, you're essentially boosting contrast saying, all of this is black and all of this is white. And you can see we've boosted the contrast. But that's not everything that this does. It does a whole lot more. It's massively powerful. So you now have the mid-tone point. Essentially, what you're saying is by moving this this way, more of the image is going to be in the darks, therefore making the image darker. If you slide to the left towards the darks, you're saying that there's more to the right-hand side towards the lights, so more of these, this part of the histogram is going to be in the lights, therefore making the image lighter. So that's how that works, okay? So you can reset this like so. Now, there's some other elements to this that, there's a lot more elements to this that we need to jump into. So at first you've got these little droplets down here. Now essentially you can set the dark point or black point here, the white point here and the midtones here. But this is what we have to remember about this image. Right now we're in RGB, red, green and blue. It's doing all the channels at the same time. But you can also divide this into these three separate channels. Okay, so for example, we can move the black point of the reds. Okay, so it's gonna add cyan in there, or if we do it at the top section, it's gonna add the cyan in because anything above this is 100% red and anything below this is 0% red. I'll get into that in a second. But the reason why I wanted to show that is because even when you're in RGB, these little droppers here, eyedroppers, they are gonna look at the color of it. So when you pick your darks, you really need something which is pure black. So if I click on this, down here, it's kind of pure black and it hasn't changed the color very much. And I can do the same thing for the highlights. So that's done quite a good job. So it's now given me the entire scale. Now, mid-tones, I would need something perfectly 50% gray. 
Because if it's not, if I was to select, say, uh, this is probably 50%, but it's green. If I click on that, it's going to change the color of my image to blue. So I would say be really careful using these droppers as it could change the color of your image. Okay? And if you go too far with an image, just hit reset down here and it's going to reset it. So now we've got, now we've done this top section, we're going to get onto the bottom one in a minute, but I want to demonstrate what this top section does. To do this, we're going to be using this here. Okay, so this is my um, color palette that I've built here with different percentages of black from zero, so it's 100% black, to um, 10, which is 100% white. Okay, really simple. So we're going to move the adjustments layer to the top of that, like so. And now what we can do is I can show you how this works. Now watch this, if I move the black point, essentially, as I go across, you can see that more of the image becomes black. So if, for example, I move the black point up about 20%, you can see that now points 0, 1, and 2 are all pure black. And that's because I've set the black point to be right here, so everything here is going to be black. Now I can do the same over here with the white. So if I bring that in, now I set it here, anything above here is now white, and that corresponds to this. So this is how I've built all of this. And then if I extend this fully, and I can move the middle section, you can see, move it to the left, and more elements are going to be in the lights, and move it to the right, and more elements are going to be in the darks. So this is a really great, clear explanation showing exactly what this graph does. So please have a look at this and give it a go yourself. Now, now let's come back to this image, and I want to talk about what this down at the bottom does here. Now, this is now setting what the black point is. So, for example, maybe we move this in here on the blacks, okay? And then we say, well, this means it's 100% black or zero, okay? Because your output levels go from zero to 255. That's how the RGB color spectrum works. So, for example, you could say, well, you don't want black to be at zero. I want black to be at 20, essentially reducing contrast because now blacks aren't pure black anymore. They've got 20% of white or, or, yeah, 20% in there. Now, you can do the same thing with the white, so 255 is 100% white. Now, if I was to pull this down, I can say, well, I want it to be all the way down here, and none of my whites are pure white. They're now gray. So let's have a look by taking it back into this, and now let's take a look at this. So let's have a look at the blacks over here. So if I was to move this up about a quarter of the way here, which would be around number three, what you're going to do, look at the color of this gray. Now if I move this up here, sorry, okay, now you can see zero is kind of like that color three. Now the reason for that is I've moved my black point, saying that I don't want it to be pure black. And I can do the same thing inside the white. So let's move this along here, and you can see that if I was to go, I want the white point to be right here, so my purest white would be this actually tone of grey, I can just move it in to about 7, you know, if you split this up to 10, about 7. Now this colour here is the same as that colour here. So that's really how it works. So if you to combine the two, so let's, for example, bring these two in, reducing the contrast, going from grey to grey, and now when I move this around, it does the same thing, but essentially it's doing it within those boundaries that I've set. So it can never go 100% black or 100% white. So on an image, now we can see what I've done here is essentially I've reduced the contrast this way, and I can boost the contrast this way. And then I can move my midtone and move it all around there. So you can see really this is incredibly powerful. Now, Let's use this to actually do an edit on this image to show you what I might do. So first of all, you can see on my histogram here, I'm going to bring my black point up to here, so I'm going to add a little bit of contrast. Now what I'm going to do is my white point, I can bring this in a little bit just to boost those highlights, and I like it, but I want to lift the image a little bit. So I'm going to pull it that way. That's really, really great. Now, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my reds, okay, and I'm going to pull this one up, and it's going to add 
cyan to the image. Now that's because of this. The colors work the same way. So up here, okay, this is where it gets really interesting. I've said that the black point, anything this side of here is zero red. So it adds in more cyan. Making sense? If I go this way, anything above here, 100% red, therefore makes it more red. Then I can change my red point. So I can move this in, it's gonna add cyan to the highlights, and I'm gonna move it this way, and it's gonna add reds to the shadows. So for example, for this one, I'm gonna bring in some reds to the shadows like that, because I really like this, and I'm gonna add a little bit more red. It looks great. And then I'm gonna go to blue, and I'm actually gonna do the opposite, so I'm gonna put blue in, no, I'm not gonna bring in the blue this side, and you can see, just move that image a little tiny bit. It's kind of like split toning in a way, but a little bit different. You can play around within that. I'm gonna go into the green channel. Okay, I actually, oh, there you go. That looks really nice. And I'm actually gonna go back into my RGB and I'm gonna add some more darks to that. Okay, so now this starts to look really, really wonderful. So now let's turn that off and on. Wouldn't necessarily have done that because I love the image as it first was, but you can see I've completely warmed the image up just by using the levels. So you really can see how powerful levels is and how many things you really can do inside Photoshop. Spend a little time practicing with it. Now, if you like this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to my channel because I've got loads more tutorials on their way. This is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune, I guess.